Hey friends, today we're talking about tents. Specifically, my favorite tent for hiking solo, hiking with a dog, and hiking with a partner. Some of these are gonna be budget items and others a little bit higher end. As you know, my gear reviews really are more anecdotal. We're not gonna go into all of the technical specs of everything. Uh, I think it's pretty important if you're considering a piece of gear to do a little of the legwork on your own as far as researching those details. But I'm hoping that something I share here today, just the pros and cons from my own personal experience, might help inform your decision uh, if you're considering one of these tents. So without further ado, let's take a look at my favorite tent for hiking solo. Alrighty, so this is my favorite tent for going solo the Lanshan One. And this is not the Pro, this is the original Lanshan One. Let's go ahead and get into the pros. First of all, it's a pretty compact and lightweight tent weighing two pounds and eight ounces. And that does not include your trekking pole. The great thing about this is if you're a trekking pole user, you're already carrying the weight for part of your setup for this tent. The other thing is it's pretty easy to pitch. I personally think that the Lanshan 1 is a whole heck of a lot easier to pitch than the Lanshan 2, just because I only have to worry about putting up one pole. It's kind of a dance of running back and forth to get the tension just right with the two, because uh, if one pole falls, the other one will. With this, it's pretty straightforward. You just stake out your corners and uh, raise your pole on the inside use this main line to really pull that tension and you know pitch the tent up and then you go around the outside and pull tight the corners to make sure you have a nice tight taut pitch so very easy and straightforward and the more you do it the easier it gets i took this tent on my through hike of the foothills trail last year and by day seven i was a pro at setting this thing up and tearing it back down so really easy once you get a little bit of experience with it. Another thing I like about this tent is how much space it takes up or lack thereof. Not just in my pack, but when I actually set it up, it doesn't take up very much space at all. Being a one person tent, it's pretty small. So there were times on my hike when I was sharing a campsite with other people and it was already a little bit crowded, but my tent didn't take up very much room. I wasn't really intruding on anyone else's space, just kind of fits into its own little corner. So that's kind of a benefit. Along the lines of being a smaller tent, it's also pretty minimalist. Uh, it's great for just one person. It's great for just me, has the perfect amount of space for just me, doesn't have all those extra bells and whistles. If that's not something you care about, then this is a pretty great tent. There's just enough space under the vestibule for my pack and maybe my shoes and one other gear item. And on the inside, there's room for my sleeping pad, my sleeping bag, and one or two gear items. So like a water bottle or my technology bag, whatever it may be. There's not a ton of extra space and there's one or two little pockets where I can tuck away um, items that I would need in the tent with me overnight. The other thing to mention is the color. I went with the black and red accent, not only because it looks uh, super sleek and sharp, but also because it helps to block out light. One of the frustrations I've had with um, lighter colored sil nylon tents is that it lets in a ton of light, especially if it's a full moon, it's like having a spotlight right on your tent. And that's a little bit frustrating, especially when I'm trying to get my beauty rest on the trail. But this having a more opaque color blocks out the light so well. But it also doesn't block it out to the point that you can't be aware of your surroundings. For example, there was someone night hiking when I took this on the Foothills Trail and uh, I was alerted to their headlamp through the um, sil nylon, so it's not like, you know, you can't see any light coming through. It just helps to block out some of that natural light to help me get a better night's sleep. The last pro, of course, is the price point. This is considered a budget tent. I've seen it run anywhere between $120 and $150, depending on just what site you buy it from, whether that's Amazon or AliExpress, but it is considered in that budget price point. 
So maybe you want to try out a trekking pole tent, but you don't want to spend upwards of hundreds of dollars to try like one of the Z-Pack Soloplex or whatever. You want to give it a try and if it doesn't work out for you, then you could trade it with a friend for other gear or resell it and it won't be too big of a financial loss. That's always a really big thing for me is I hate investing in a piece of gear and if there's not a good return policy, losing out on money because it just is not for me. So this is a budget friendly option just to get the hang of using a trekking pole tent. So now let's talk about the cons or not so great things about this tent. I mentioned it's small compact size as being a good thing. It can also be a bad thing. I'm 5'5", five five and I feel like I have the exact amount of room I need for my head and my toes to not be touching the mesh body of the tent. I would say if you are six foot or taller, this tent is probably gonna be too short for you. And if you're also a broader or wider person, you may not have enough room in this tent. I've got the Nemo Tensor Pad and it's just the regular mummy. If you have a wider sleeping pad, it may not fit. So just take that into consideration as far as your height. And if you're a broader person, then this may not be the right one person tent for you. Another thing I've had a small problem with is condensation. There have been times in which the condensation has built up a ton on the inside of the tent and then dripped onto my sleeping bag. Um, thankfully, the tent dries out very quickly. So uh, if I pack it up while it's wet from all that condensation, then when I set it back up at my next camp, it'll dry out fairly quick. Just, it can be a little bit annoying throughout the night if it builds up a lot or in the morning. So that is something to consider that this isn't exactly a condensation proof tent. The last con or negative as far as the Lanshan one is because tension is necessary to get a good pitch on this tent, I have had trouble setting it up in places like campgrounds where there's a gravel tent pad. Don't even get me started on places like Grandfather Mountain where they've got wooden tent pads. Um, that is a whole nother animal to deal with. But um, gravel tent pads, I've had a really hard time driving the stakes in enough to get that real tension needed to hold this thing up. Uh, it gets pretty saggy and uh, you know, just doesn't offer the same amount of room on the inside necessary to make this a comfortable one person tent uh, if you don't have that tension on it. And uh, yeah, that's just one of the things, depending on where you are setting this up, some places may be better or worse than others just because of that tension factor. Now, one last thing I'll say about this tent before we move on to my favorite tent for hiking with a dog is the stakes it comes with are pretty small. I'll show you my little trail magic stake that I got on the Foothills Trail, actually the first day. Uh, if you don't know that story, go read the trail journal. I talk all about just being so frustrated with pitching this thing. And then, ta-da, the Lord provides the perfect stake at my first campsite. So this stake has stayed in this tent bag since my first day on the Foothills Trail. You can see it's much larger than the stakes it originally comes with and it really gets the job done for holding this front line down and giving that tension necessary to hold up the trekking pole. So if you do decide that you want to test out this tent or maybe you already have it and are having a hard time getting this front line to uh, stay staked down, then consider investing in a larger stake with um, more of like a hook on the end of it to really hold that line. And now we have my favorite tent for hiking with a four-legged friend. This is the Big Agnes Fly Creek 2 and I've got the bike pack version which just means that those poles are in smaller segments to help the tent compact down a little bit better. And this has plenty of room for me and a 75 pound German Shepherd. It also has plenty of room for me and Barrett, my 100 pound German Shepherd. So plenty of room for me and the dog to sleep pretty comfortably. Um, 
without getting into any arguments about whose paws or feet are being stuck in whose face. This tent comes in at about two pounds and 10 ounces. I've seen some sites even list it as two pounds, eight ounces. Uh, either way, it's a pretty lightweight tent, especially for a two person. The other thing I'll say as far as weight is since I'm the one carrying the brunt of the gear, sure, I could probably give her the rain fly or something in her pack, but since I'm the one carrying the most of it, this is definitely not going to break my back having this larger tent uh, along for the trip with us. So that's one of the benefits or pros to this tent. Another thing is the vestibule space. Plenty of room for me to put my pack. And uh, yes, Nora does have a habit of kind of, you know, tearing out of the tent in the morning, ready to greet the day. But uh, there's enough space that she can step over the pack and not trample all of our gear that's sitting in the vestibule overnight. Another thing is there are gear pockets in this tent that I love. So there's a gear pocket on each side, as well as a gear loft in the back. So I can put whatever things we need for the night, uh, either in this hanging gear pocket, or I can put, you know, a water bottle, whatever, uh, just off to the side that is not in either of our way. As far as condensation, I have had um, trouble a time or two with it, but overall the Fly Creek 2 has not been too bad on condensation. I have not woken up with, you know, water dripping onto my forehead or wetting down my sleeping bag in the morning or at night. So not to say that I haven't had some experiences where it builds up a little, but it's not um, common enough that it's a regular problem, I guess. Now let's talk about the not so great things is it's a two man tent, but I honestly can say that I think it's more of a one and a half person tent and so the dog kind of counts as half a person size I think. My husband and I have tried to sleep in this tent before and uh, it was just horribly uncomfortable. I know a lot of couples have probably been able to comfortably sleep in this tent and you know it's their go-to and they like it but as for us um, we love each other very much but way too close for comfort. And uh, if one person moved in the night, you know, they were going to get a elbow or a wrist or a fist to the face on accident just because we were such close quarters. So not enough room for me and another person, more like just me and a dog. All right, let's talk about the price point. This I would kind of consider a con just because most people don't have $380 burning a hole in their pocket. So it's right under $400 there at that 380 point. Uh, but I do think that making an investment in a tent like this could be worth it, especially because of just the warranties and uh, guarantees that these bigger name gear companies have as far as if there's some kind of manufacturing error with the tent or, you know, I know Big Agnes will for a small price repair zippers and holes and tears as long as it's not too extreme. So you are kind of paying for that customer service and longevity of the product. While a higher price point doesn't always mean better quality, I believe with Big Agnes it does. You're going to get a longer lifespan out of this tent than you would say the Lanshan or a nature hike tent that you only pay a hundred dollars or a little bit over for. Which brings us to alternatives. Um, if you want to try a tent in this style, my understanding is that the Nature Hike Cloud Up 2 has a very similar style and is in that 100 and 150 price point. And unfortunately, by going with that budget alternative, you are gonna pay a weight penalty. I'll correct myself on the screen later if I'm wrong, but I believe the Cloud Up tent is in the three pound range. Last up, we have my favorite tent for hiking with a buddy. And no, I don't mean the furry four-legged kind. I mean another person. So my original choice was actually going to be the Lanshan 2. 
But then on this recent trip to Linville Gorge, my husband and I tested out the Big Agnes Copper Spur 2. And I've also taken this tent on um, a three-day trip with my friend Brooke. And after those experiences, this is my favorite tent for hiking with another person. So let's talk about the pros of this tent. First of all, once again, it's the weight. This tent comes in at three pounds, two ounces. And the great thing about this is hiking with a partner, you can split that weight up. So for our Linville Gorge trip, my husband and I split that up so that he took the body and the fly and the stakes and I took the poles and we just kind of separated it out into our packs. So we were each carrying about a pound and a half each. The other thing is the spaciousness, especially if you're hiking with your significant other. I told you we had a nightmare experience trying to sleep in the Fly Creek 2 together. Sleeping in the Copper Spur was so much better. We could change around our sleeping positions to where if I wanted to sleep with my arms at my sides or above my head and you know him the same way if I wanted to turn on my side or my stomach, we didn't disturb each other. And a lot of that also has to do with the pad that we used. We used the Climate V2 person, so a double pad. Um, and I can talk about that, review that another time but uh, we used that and had uh, plenty of space on this trip to sleep comfortably and not disturb each other. So this tent has a pocket on either side. It also has a pocket above on both sides. So you've got two pockets here. You've got two pockets here. Plenty of space for each person occupying the tent to put whatever gear items they need and it not just be in the way rolling around on the tent floor, you get the picture. Another thing that is great is the double doors or the double vestibules. I know lots of couples love having this because if somebody has to get out of the tent in the middle of the night or wants to get up earlier than the other person, fix breakfast, start camp chores, they don't wanna disturb their partner who's still sleeping. Now, for our trip, we actually just used one door and used the other vestibule to store our packs. We just stacked our packs on top of each other under that vestibule and designated that one as just our gear storage. And then our walkway, our entrance and exit door was totally free of clutter and we could come and go as we pleased. And another great thing about that was it started to rain our second night and uh, we didn't have to worry about somebody coming or going through one of the entrance slash exits and the pack getting wet as, you know, the rain fly gets severed from the stake and starts dripping onto whoever's pack is sitting on that side. All of our gear stayed on the opposite door, opposite side uh, and stayed dry. And then we would access our stuff from the inside of the tent and then come and go through the one entrance we designated, like I said. Now let's talk about the cons or not so great things with this tent. So I'm not a fan of the tapered design. It's kind of a trapezoid. So the feet part of the tent kind of tapers down and is much slimmer than the area where you would lay with your head and your shoulders. So this is fine if the person you're sharing the tent with doesn't mind being nose to nose. But if you'd rather sleep nose to toes with this person, uh, someone's gonna have to sleep on the slimmer or more narrow side. And so it wasn't the biggest deal. I did do that when I shared this tent with my friend. I just slept on the toes side. And while it was a bit of a squeeze, it wasn't uncomfortable. So just keeping that in mind. Also with the tapered design, the sleeping pad my husband and I used, the double uh, V sleeping pad, uh, didn't quite fit. So parts of it curled up a little on this bathtub floor. It wasn't uh, a problem per se. Uh, it just kind of spilled up a little bit on the side of the tent because the pad was a rectangle shape and not a trapezoid. Now in terms of condensation, we didn't really have a problem. Uh, the only thing was user error. I didn't close the vent at the top here the night that it rained 
And so we did get water dripping in on our foreheads and noses. Not a whole lot, just enough that you start to doze off and all of a sudden something drops on your face and kind of startles you. So, uh, word to the wise, close that vent if it's gonna be raining and you don't want to get a little bit wet. Last thing is the cost, $450. Once again, not something that most people have burning a hole in their pocket. But like I said with the Fly Creek, with that price point does come a higher quality product with, you know, that big brand name and customer service attached to it. There are budget alternatives or copycats out there. The Nature Hike Monger is a similar tent. Once again, for that lower price, you're paying a weight penalty. Uh, there's also the Nature Hike Vic 2, which is a tent that I do own and have used. It is very similar um, as far as it has that tapered shape to it. It is a single wall tent and the poles actually go on the outside of it. Um, I wasn't as impressed with the tent. Condensation was a pretty big problem. As far as spaciousness, it was fine. It also had gear pockets, but it was like the minimal kind of dumbed down version of what this tent is and again it was in that over a hundred dollar range um, not too heavy weighing in around three pounds all right so that was my top three favorite tents if you're interested in getting one of these tents and also want to support the channel i'll include my amazon affiliate links for each of the ones talked about here today this is no extra cost to you. It just sends a little incentive to me for referring you to the product. So again, those will be in the description for the Lanshan One, the Copper Spur, and the Fly Creek. I hope you found some of what I shared here today helpful. I thank you so much for watching and I can't wait to see you again next time.